Hey everybody, this is Aaron from Aaron's Audio Corner, and today I'm going to be reviewing something that is kind of out of the wheelhouse of the norm. This is the Sing Cell Alpha. I approached Sing about seven, eight, nine, ten months ago to ask about this. This is a speaker that really caught my attention because of some of the things that they were saying it was capable of doing. And honestly, it just, you know, it looked different. And if I'm also being honest, it really just looked kind of gimmicky. But at the same time, I was curious because sometimes, you know, gimmicky turns out to be real life. It turns out to work in the real world and you can go from gimmicky to really quality and feats of engineering pretty quickly. But being a little bit cynical sometimes is also a good thing. I was finally able to get my hands on these products and I can just tell you that they are definitely different. And and I know some people will read into that. Oh, well, he means it doesn't like it. No, it's it's first of all, it's outside of my wheelhouse, like I said, which means that it's not something that I would use on in my own situation. Uh, number one, I've got two big dogs. I've got a child. They wouldn't really fit my lifestyle, but it doesn't mean that I can't be curious and I can't provide you all with some information. Uh, I've had these speakers for uh, maybe two, maybe almost three months at this point. And in that time, I've had the opportunity to speak with one of their acoustic engineers. Um, I don't know exactly what her title is, but man, when I, when I tell you that she's on top of it, she knows her stuff. It was just a pleasure, honestly, and a treat to be able to talk to seeing about the design work that went into the speaker, because this isn't just your everyday normal Bluetooth or wireless speaker it really is so much more than that. There's a lot of quality engineering that I want to talk about in this video. Now, the one thing that I won't be able to do, unfortunately, is I won't be able to provide you with true anechoic data. As much as I tried, trust me, I, I thought of every possible way that I could do this. It's just not feasible with a speaker like this. The reason for that is this speaker runs through its own self calibration. Basically, as soon as you fire it up, if you want to listen to any music or you want to watch television through it, any kind of source that you want to feed it before you can do that, you've got to run its self calibration. And the self calibration is really cool because what it does is it detects nearby boundaries, walls, floors, ceiling, etc. And in doing so, it can help provide you with some beam steering, basically, which allows like a cardioid effect. And if you've watched some of the other reviews on cardioid speaker, like the Key Audio 3 or the Dutch & Dutch 8C, I'll throw one of them up here in the link above, you know that cardioid basically means frontward firing above some frequency. And I'm told by the engineer that the frontward firing portion occurs roughly around 80 hertz and below 80 hertz or so, the speaker is omnidirectional. And the reason for that is because most rooms aren't wider or longer in dimension than 80 hertz wavelength. And this is actually something that Key Audio prescribes to as well. Bruno Putzies has done an interview, and if I can find that, I'll link it in the description below, where he talks about how the Key 3 is very similar in this nature. And again, I mentioned the Key 3 because it too is a cardioid design below and above a certain frequency where that pattern really starts to become frontward firing and less toward the rear. And that's a really good way of providing you with a better in-room response. In my experience, cardioid speakers are really just a step up. When you're talking about the best of the best dipole speakers or monopole speakers, and then you step up to a cardioid design, it really is in a different league. Now, I'm not saying it's for everybody, but it's something worth hearing if you ever do get the opportunity. But back to this unit. As I said, with its self-calibration, it automatically wants to calibrate itself to the room. In order for me to provide you with anechoic data that would make sense, I would have to somehow bypass that self-calibration. And in talking with Sing, that's just not something the end user can do. Ultimately, that means that I'm not going to be able to provide you with anechoic data. But what I have done, and hopefully this is good enough to give you an idea of the performance of the speaker, is I have provided you with some in-room measurements and some binaural recordings in real time so you can see the effect of shifting the soundstage around between the speakers. And when I say shifting the soundstage around the speakers, you'll know what I mean when we get to the demo, but as a jump off point, what I can tell you is the Sing app that you can download on your iPhone will allow you to basically move and pan the soundstage imaging 
and the steering of each individual cell from one to N. I don't even know how many multiples you can add. I was using three in my demo. You can beam steer that and project the sound field to basically however you want it to be. It's, it's really neat. And that was really one of the things that I was most curious about. And the reason why I requested so many times to get some units in to demo, because I'm really curious, personally speaking, about the trade-off between a very wide soundstage and loss of focus or a very narrow soundstage and uh, improvement in focus and imaging. You know, I'm curious about what those trade-offs get you, if they're real, if they're imagined by myself, because in audio, everything is a little bit of a trade-off. Some people prefer X, Y, or Z, while others prefer Z, Y, or X. I did that right the first time. I can't believe it. So when you're talking about trade-offs, it's important to understand what you like. And these speakers gave me the opportunity to do that. So let's talk about some of the specs here. Now, this is a three-way triphonic speaker featuring two six and a half inch mid bass, three three and a half inch mid ranges, and three coaxial mounted three quarter tweeters. Pricing on these varies from about $1799 to $1969 MSRP, and that's US dollars. The variation in pricing really just comes down to the poles that you get. If you get the table stand as shown in this photo, or if you get the stacked pole that allows you to stand the speakers up even higher. And in my demos, I actually used the fully stacked version so I could get the uh, speakers up high off about ear level or so without having to set them onto a table or a stand. Let's talk about the woofers. The woofers are mounted in a fully sealed enclosure and they are opposite firing, which means they provide some force cancellation. But what does that really mean? Well, essentially that means that the speakers are in phase acoustically in the room, but mechanically they're out of phase when they're attached to the sing itself, which limits transmission of vibration. And in fact, you can actually stand one of these on a table and have a glass next to it. And in my experience, the glass wasn't really moving. It's really something to behold how well the vibration is cut when you have force canceling subwoofers. This is technology that you can find in other speakers and even DIY designs have stuff like this. A lot of people that run infinite baffle setups in their home implement something like this. So it's not new, but it is very useful to have. And I'm gonna show you something. This is a world exclusive. This is gonna be the bottom woofer. It's a six and a half inch, like I said, stamp steel basket. And you can see that there's a pole right through here, or I should say a hole right through here. That allows the pole to go right up through here. And that's how it clamps to the bottom. Now on the top, you've got another six and a half inch And the thing about these are Neo motors, crazy strong. The stamp steel basket doesn't exude quality, but the big thick rubber surround gives you the indication that there's some good throw on these. You'll see in my measurements just how low they extend, but getting down to 30, 20 hertz even in room was really no task for these guys. And it really was quite crazy. Now we have the three and a half inch mid range with the three quarter inch tweeter coaxially mounted. And I'm gonna skip ahead, here we go, as a zoomed in view. But what I thought you might also wanna see again, world exclusive, this is it. This is a three and a half inch mid range. Check it out. That's just kinda of cool, right? So you know, we'll see that. And now, one inch dome tweeter. Cool, so they're kinda of mounted like this. And then the next step is to look at the waveguide. Now, I don't know exactly what the dispersion angle is on the waveguide, but Considering that there's three of these, then I'm going to say it's probably about 120 degrees per waveguide. If you look in this photo, you can also see that there are some holes. Now that really is just for the mid-range to fire through, and that really doesn't seem to cause any issues. If anything, it could act as an acoustic low pass. I would leave that up to the engineers to talk about that more. Again, I'm just going to fall back on these people seem to really know their stuff, and I was just blown away uh, by the amount of engineering that went into the speaker to provide you with a true point source sound covering 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz like it ain't nobody's business. Now, as I said earlier, you can purchase just one or you can add multiples and I reviewed three. One gets you what I would consider enveloping sound with a semblance of stereo, not true stereo, but a semblance of stereo. It's one of those things that's kind of hard to describe when I'm describing it, but I think if you have the opportunity to listen to it, you might better understand what I'm talking about. And hopefully we'll, we'll get to that a little bit in the video. 
But I would not say that one of these alone placed in the center of a room is going to provide you with good left and right information. It will provide you with some semblance of that, though. Now, two will provide you with true stereo. But the cool thing about it is, is you can also place yourself inside the sound field or outside. Most stereo speakers, you're on the outside, you're looking in like it's a stage, right? Most stereo speakers are that way. And then when you start getting into surround sound, that's when you get the effects from the ambience and the panning and things like that. But two of the sing units will allow you to do that. You can vary just how much soundstage width or how much depth, how much you want to affect the balance from side to side simply on the app. Three gets you a fully immersive sound field like you probably have not heard before. I can say it's nothing like I'd heard before and it's definitely different than 5.1 or 5. Point whatever theater. Like I have in my home theater set up as a 5.2 setup. Having three scenes is nothing like having a 5 point in setup in your room. It really is quite different. And again, I'm going to fall back to if you have the opportunity to experience it, try it out, see what you think. I would really be curious to know what others have to say in the comments below. Remember earlier I said I couldn't provide you with true anechoic data just because the way the system sets up itself. And I feel like any data that I do provide would be incredibly misleading and just easily taken out of context. So in lieu of that, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna provide you with some in-room demos using binaural mics. So this is the point where I suggest you go grab some headphones. If you need to pause it, go grab some headphones, come back, we'll keep going. This demo is using only two cell alphas. I had three for the majority of my listening sessions, but when I took them all from my living room up to my home theater room to do the demos and get out of the way of the dogs and the extraneous noise that's in there, I could not for the life of me get the third one to reconnect. And I had issues with that before. I was able to resolve those with seeing, but I needed to get this video done. I couldn't wait around another day. So I went ahead and filmed it with just two which means that you're going to kind of have to take my word for what the third one provides. You can control depth and width. You can control the tonality. You control shading. You can do a lot of things. But adding the third one also really gives you more even bass. Again, these calibrate themselves to the room that you're in. And in doing so, they can also see each other and talk to each other and know that the other one is over there. And by doing that, they can also kind of essentially set themselves up as multiple subwoofers. And if you're a home audio or home theater enthusiast, you know the power of having multiple subwoofers is in canceling out and remedying the room modes. They basically just work with each other to fill in the peaks and dips and instead of fighting each other and creating more issues. And that's what you get really when you step up to the third one. But as I said, this demo is going to be done with just the two scenes that I could get to work for the demo. Try to pay attention to the soundstage shift and the relative difference in tonality as I move about the soundstage. I'm going to start this demo by starting with the scenes at the standard sound field position, as you see on my iPhone screen. This is the app for the Sing Cell Alphas. Right now, I've got the placement of the sound field at the middle of the room. I can move the placement directivity pretty much wherever I want, but this is the default. And you can see that on the left and right is the rough approximation of where the seeing cell alphas are located. And they were determined acoustically all through the app. So it was actually really cool that it does that automatically. We're gonna play some pink noise and then I'm gonna move this thing around. That's all the way at the front. It sounds like things are more focused right toward the center. If I move it between the speakers, it sounds a little bit more broad. To me, it sounds a little bit more diffuse now. It sounds bigger, but a little bit more diffuse. And then if I move it to the very back, it's definitely different, though I don't know how I would quite describe that sound. So let's walk back to the middle again and then back to the center. Now the other things that I want to do are to do some RTA measurements with those various positions. So first of all, we're going to start off with the standard middle setting and I'm going to pull up REW. I'm going to pull up the RTA app 
And I've got this set for some number of averaging at 124 octave, nothing too fancy here, just some basic settings. And we're gonna do some comparisons. Now, the one thing that I really would like to note in this particular um, demonstration is that when I'm moving the sound field around, the one thing that the RTA data does not show you is the timing and intensity differences, but you can hear that. So that's why I'm, I'm doing part of this review with these binaural mics. And I'm hoping you're able to correlate what you see to some degree in the data to what you're hearing through this binaural demo. The other thing about this particular set of data that I have right now, or I've just created, is that with the app, I currently have the bass set up to standard. And some reviewers have said that the bass was maybe too much. Linus Tech Tip said the bass was too much. And I think that's the point where Sing went and provided the ability to do a reduced bass setting. So I'm gonna kick that in. In a second, I'm gonna A, B, okay? So first we're gonna start off with the standard setting. And this is standard bass, and now we're gonna to go to reduced bass. And you can hear the difference, and I'm also going to provide a measurement. To me, the bass sounds much more neutral in the reduced setting versus the standard setting, where the standard setting is just too much bass. Now this being a personal thing, some people may prefer more bass or less bass, and that's up to you. You do have the ability to make that tweak if you want to. And that's gonna be it for this review. Again, I wanna thank Sing for loaning me these speakers. Now, obviously I was not paid. Um, the amount of man hours I have in this review, goodness. Yeah, I probably should have gotten a second job if I wanted to pay for that. But seriously speaking though, I do appreciate them taking the time to send these out to me, to give me the opportunity to kind of play around with something new to me, uh, to give you the opportunity to to hear what, what this can sound like and what just changing the directivity of a speaker allows you to do. I also want to thank Beth for taking the time to explain to me some of the engineering and the background principles of this speaker. Because as I said, I started off thinking this was just a really gimmicky design. And after I left that conversation with Beth, my mind was changed. I was sold on the engineering. Now, being sold on the product is something that I think is going to be more personal. As I said, this isn't something that I would use for my daily life just because it just doesn't fit my lifestyle, but that doesn't mean it can't fit yours. Tonality wise, it wasn't it wasn't there for me, right? The the bass was awesome, but as you can see in the in-room response measurements, there is kind of a dip and then a rolling back up response in the in the treble. And while that sounds cool at first, after a little while it's like, "Uh, eh, okay, I'm I'm not really feeling that so much." So I would encourage the folks at Sing, if they can, to allow the user to apply equalization or maybe just allow the end user to adjust the high frequency trim if they want to the same way as they do on the reduced and standard bass setting. I really think this is one of those things where it's so unique and so different that if you are interested, I do encourage you to try it out. I would say that if you're interested in the speaker, order them, give them a shot. And if you don't like them, man, man, just send them back. That's it for me for this review. If you haven't already and you like what you're seeing, hit the subscribe button, hit the notification bell, hit the thumbs up, do all that kind of cool YouTube algo stuff. And I will talk to y'all later. Peace.